Welcome back to the second hour of No Alibis. As we said in the beginning of the show, our second group of guests will be talking about something that is very close to the UC system and something that I can say I'm also a part of, and that is the ongoing um, negotiations for the uh, UC AFT Unit 18, uh, who are the considered officially called the UC lecturers at the University of California. So this morning, uh, we are privileged to have three guests on our show, and I will let them introduce themselves, but they are uh, Mia MacGyver, uh, who is the lead negotiator for Unit 18, uh, Katya McLean, who is a lecturer at UC Santa Barbara, and Brandon Adams, who is also a lecturer at UC Santa Barbara. So before we begin, I would like them to introduce themselves uh, briefly, and then we can go from there. Uh, Mia, you want to get started? Hi, good morning. Thank you for having us, Gary. Um, I'm Mia McIver. I teach as a lecturer in writing programs at UCLA. I've been president of UCAFT since 2017, and I'm the lead negotiator for our faculty bargaining unit in the contract campaign that we're going to talk about today. Uh, Katya, good morning. Good morning, Gary. Thank you for having us on. Um, I am Katya McLean. I am a uh, lecturer at UC Santa Barbara in Germanic and Slavic, actually in the Slavic program. And uh, this quarter marks my 30th year of teaching as a lecturer at, at UC Santa Barbara. And I've had various roles in the union, although I've never been on a negotiating team. So I really respect the work that Mia has put in for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. Uh, Brandon, welcome. Hi, thank you. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm Brandon Adams. Uh, oh, well, first I would like to say, you know, this this radio show is really cool and I think it's one of the best things that comes out of UCSB. So I really appreciate uh, having us on. I'm a first year lecturer, actually. I just finished my PhD last year uh, in the history department and I teach some labor history and uh, some environmental history, urban history, various courses. I am, I have no, uh, you know, official role in this in the union. I'm <clears throat> I just make a lot of phone calls to members. I think is what I've been doing. So I talk, I've been talking to a lot of people, which is uh, which has been interesting, and and um, people are a little bit fired up. So that's that's great. Yeah. No, thank you, Brandon. And I think um, when we cannot minimize the, the importance of phone calls because I've had that experience as part of the bargaining committee for librarians, but also I used to be a campaign, um, I did a campaign walk for um, a local representative in San Diego many, many years ago. And talking to people is a lot of work, especially um, if your views don't, um, don't align. So that is a, at some time that is a very, um, for me, um, imposing or fearful type of conversations, but I think those are necessary conversations to make, so thank you. Um, so I guess since we're um, all introducing ourselves, I, I think maybe I, I need to also introduce what I do. I am a librarian at UC Santa Barbara for over 20 years now. And uh, like everyone, our guests, uh, we are also represented, or uh, I'm part of the librarian group that are represented by the University of California American Federation of Teachers. We are unit 17, whereas lecturers are unit 18. So. I'm also on the executive local committee board with Katya. So I've become very familiar with the, the struggles and experiences of lecturers locally and statewide. And so we are really um, in solidarity with the kind of work, uh, with the kind of um, union organizing that they, are, that they need now. Uh, because uh, maybe during the conversation, I can share some of our experiences because we, uh, we recently completed a contract two years ago. And, and also we had similar struggles. Uh, but, to begin, but the focus here is on the lectures. And um, maybe to begin with, maybe for our listeners, can, can all of you provide a brief introduction uh, who are the lecturers in the University of California system? I'll go ahead and start. 
Lecturers are faculty at the University of California who are dedicated to teaching students. Um, lecturers are typically hired on short term part time contracts, um, even though the work of teaching at the University of California um, goes on and on and on. Our students are here, our classes are here, um, and that's a central element of our of our contract campaign and, and the fight that we're in now. Um, so lecturers typically uh, have um, the same degrees, qualifications, credentials, experience that tenure track faculty do, um, but we are not eligible for tenure. And Brandon and Katya, I'm sure you have more to add to. Um, yeah, we should, I think we should also mention that um, the way the system is currently set up, that lecturers teach twice as much, um, twice as many classes per year as the tenure track uh, faculty. And um, that we often um, teach classes that are some of the first things that students take at the university, writing classes, language classes. And so we have um, a lot of interaction with incoming students and helping them organize that transition from high school into um, being at the university. Thank you. Brandon, if you have. Um, yeah, you and uh, you know, and I think that in a lot of, there are a lot of people, lecturers who teach, in addition to the intro level courses, uh, teach, you know, courses at every level, except with, perhaps with the exception of teaching graduate level courses, but I'm sure that there are plenty of exceptions to even that. It's just, I, in the history department, there are several of us we teach intro level, we teach big courses, we teach small courses, we teach writing, we teach basically everything. And, you know, and Gary, you were getting at a point, which is that that students oftentimes have no idea about this distinction. And um, that I think says a lot. Uh, when you tell students, oftentimes their reaction is one of is one of confusion. Uh, there was, there was a, a lecture in bargaining a couple of months ago who was like, you know, I'm used to telling my students about coherent concepts and I'm pretty good at teaching them coherent concepts. But when I try to explain what a lecturer does and how we're paid, they just don't get it. So that's uh, that's lecturers. Yeah. I, no, thank go ahead, I, Mia. I like I like to say the lecturers teach everything from A to Z, everything from art history to zoology. Um, as Brandon was saying, we teach at every level. We teach, you know, first year core cluster introductory courses. We teach GE courses. We teach upper division, lower division. I teach graduate classes, so some of us do teach graduate classes. Um, if you if you take a look at the at the numbers, so lecturers teach about one third of the of the credit hours across the university. And the way that works out, it, it, what it means is that um, every term, every quarter, every semester, um, a typical UC student will be taking at least one class with a lecturer. Um, and as Brandon said, that might not be apparent um, when you're in a classroom environment. Um, uh, I think, Brandon, you, 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 you kind of, um, uh, described described your role in our union organizing um, in some very modest terms. I think you have the most important role in our union as a rank and file member organizing and the conversations that you're talking about. I just I learned so much from talking to my fellow lecturers um, uh, about their work, about their their lives and about our university. And I really encourage students to have those conversations with their faculty members also um, about, you know, are you a lecturer? Are you a tenure track faculty member to try and understand um, uh, how the university works? No, no. Uh, I, I would add something else, which is that, you know, when I was when I was getting hired on, and I moved down to Santa Barbara <clears throat> with my wife a couple of years ago and I was finishing up my PhD and I was talking to people, you know, like, what are these lecturer positions? Maybe I can get one of those at UCSB. And, Everyone I interacted with at the university, everyone who you know had held them in the past and still lived in town and found other work was basically like, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a bad job. You won't make any money. Don't do it. 
And, you know, I mean, that, that is, uh, <laughs> when, when, when you get a, a one star rating, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that was everyone's experience. Current lecturers, current faculty in the history department, you know, they're saying you're, you're hired. We're sorry. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's the kind of job it is. Yeah. So, but, um, no, thank you for doing that. I guess my follow-up question is, you know, that was my question percentage of courses in the UC that are being taught by, that are taught by lecturers. And also the, you already mentioned this me is that um, when, you know, through my work with um, the, with, with local campus lecturers, I mean, they, there, we have lecturers, there are lecturers across the disciplines, not just in the humanities and faculty, which is where the majority is, but are, but there are also in the STEM, in the STEM uh, side as well. But I think what you brought up to the point, and I think this is similar to librarians is that, um, you know, from attending a number of the uh, negotiations, um, a lot of people do this because they love to teach. They love to impart helping students uh, with their education, which I think it's still the mission of the University of California. But from, but from this negotiations, it seems not to be, uh, seems there is, um, uh, I seem to question that in, in terms, and maybe it's something we can, continue in this conversation. So um, I was going to follow up with this. I know that um, one thing why I wanted to bring you up here because in uh, I was just reading Mia's op-ed in the Daily Californian back in February. At the time she was writing that uh, the, the lecturers have been negotiating for 22 months. So now it's about five months. So it's almost over two years that you've been negotiating. And I was wondering if you can just you know present to us uh, what are the um, sticking points that seems to prevent from getting a successful agreement between uh, the two parties? Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to talk about what our issues are. I'll, I'll, I'll also just say that, you know, in addition to teaching, doing about one third of the instruction system wide, um, at, at some campuses, lecturers teach much more of that. At, at UC Merced, for example, lecturers teach about 60% of the classes. Um, and so it's, it's a key element of equity within the UC system, um, especially um, when the, 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 the smaller, newer campuses that serve historically underrepresented students um, have faculty who are more contingent, more precarious, more likely to lose their jobs. Um, uh, it's it, it's it's a real issue of equity for both students and for lecturers. So we are really fighting in this contract campaign um, over three priority issues. The first is job stability. Um, at the University of California, most lecturers teach for a year or less and are not rehired regardless of how good of a teacher they are, regardless of their performance, because it, by and large, we're not evaluated, we're not observed, we're not assessed. The average lecturer teaches for a little bit less than two years. And when you look at turnover in our bargaining unit, generally between um, one quarter and one third of all lecturer faculty um, are not rehired or renewed from year to year. And for those of us who are in our first 18 quarters or 12 semesters, that turnover rate, it, can, can, uh, it, it approaches 50%. So what, what that means, it means a couple of things for students. First of all, it means that um, the faculty member who is teaching your first year class, um, maybe your first year writing class, right? That's a, that's a small seminar where you actually get to know each other and develop a relationship. The person who stands in front of the classroom on the first day of, of college and says, welcome to college, will likely not be teaching there when you graduate. Right. Um, it, so what it means is that for students, you know, there's there can be a 50% chance um, that the instructor you had last year will not still be teaching at the university next year. So, you know, you won't be able to talk with them. You won't be able to ask for a letter of recommendation from them. Um, you won't be able to benefit from uh, their, you know, experience and, and expertise. So we're fighting to uh, bring to the University of California 
what has existed at the California State Universities for about 20 years and what has also existed at every single California community college for, uh, for a number of years now. And that is a system of uh, a system for evaluation and reemployment, um, so that faculty at the University of California are being hired and rehired on the basis of merit, not on the basis of other other things like patronage, um, uh, like convenience. Um, uh, we want to make sure that that our university is investing in teaching faculty at the point of hire. Um, the other two things that are really key to our contract campaign are workload. Um, our faculty uh, do a lot of classroom teaching, as you've heard, but we also um, do a, a lot of academic work that comes along with classroom teaching that's not that that is not actually happening in the classroom. So we are on committees, we are writing reports, we are coordinating coordinating with fellow faculty, for example. Um, and for the most part, currently that work is is uncompensated. We do it voluntarily and for free. And we're we're pretty tired of that. Um, we want all of our work to be recognized and all of our work to be paid um, because our university can can afford it. And then the third element of our contract campaign is compensation. The median annual lecturer salary at the University of California is $19,067, which is just an absolutely shocking figure. Now, it's that low because of the pervasive exploitation of part-time short-term contracts. So most of our members don't get uh, uh, full-time jobs. Most, uh, you, most of our members are not eligible for health or retirement benefits. Um, and most of our members are churned out of teaching at the university before they're eligible for the raises that our union has negotiated in the past. So those are, those are the three sticking points. Um, after more than two years of bargaining, uh, UC management has not agreed to any of our proposals for job stability, workload, or compensation. And in fact, after more than two years, they, ha they, they haven't made any proposals on rehiring. Um, they made one proposal on evaluations, but they later retracted that supposedly because of COVID. And so currently they have uh, nothing on the table. Um, they, they do not want to know how teaching faculty are teaching at the University of California. Well, thank you. Um, I was wondering if uh, Katya or Brendan have anything to add to Mia's um, point. Yeah, I just, I wanna say that it's um, discouraging when our bargaining team has put forward such very reasonable, um, important proposals that there still seems to be a pervasive attitude of, oh, lectures are just a disposable temp pool, right? That, and not taking seriously the kinds of qualifications, dedication um, that all our lecturers have. And as Mia mentioned, the ongoing relationship with students, the support for students. And it just seems puzzling when the University of California is a very resource-rich entity that it wouldn't put some of its resources into supporting excellent teaching. And, um, you know, the teaching faculty should be supported as much as the tenure track faculty. So um, where I think this makes us all a bit weary that it's been more than two years of um, trying to put forward these extremely reasonable proposals only to have everything ignored um, at the table. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brandon, yeah. do you have anything? Yeah, the, the <clears throat> where sometimes when I tell friends like what we're, what we're asking for, they're like, that's, that's nothing. Uh, you know, I mean, we're asking for not, not very much. Basically, you know, so <laughs> one of my friends is over for dinner and she said, basically what you're asking is for the university to turn the auto fire function off. And that's right. You know, I mean, there's a there's a settings board somewhere at the university president's office, and they have the auto fire button turned on. And <laughs> at the end of every year, and I know they don't like this word fire, 
but you're fired at the end of every year unless you get rehired. Um, and that's the way it is. And you can turn it off. You can just say you're automatically hired until you're fired. But it's the opposite right now. And that, you know, I mean, there is, it has to do with budget constraint. I mean, not budget constraints, but the way they do budgeting. When I was renewed for my second year, thank goodness, you know, I got an email from, from the person who hired me and said, we found money in the budget to hire you for next year. Now, you know, <laughs> I mean, I see that and I'm like, that's, that's crazy. You know, I mean, I guess I did a good job. Um, and, you know, I felt angry, but then of course, you know, it's, that was from someone in the department and, and that's, that's just an account of the truth. They had to find money in the budget to hire me for next year because right. it wasn't there to begin with. Um, and that's just the result of, um, the way that, that our positions are, are, are accounted for at the university. Yeah. Um, from what your description is, it seems like, you know, there is this a two-tier system in the UC or even three um, because the librarians are, I just want to bring the librarians are, are academic, but not Senate. So we are in this middle between the library staff employees and then the librarians and then the faculty. But in the, within that faculty, it, there is still that, that tier system between lecturers and tenure track. So uh, I think this probably, perhaps this might be, um, you know, a simple question, but um, Katya mentioned tenure track faculty. What does that mean? How is that compared to lecturers? Who wants oh. to speak about the tenure? <laughs> They're the rock stars of academia, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> who made it? <laughs> if I'm here, you know, uh, they have, um, after a certain times of, um, after a couple of years of performing or teaching, they get in this tier that they are already, they have the stability, right? Tenure track. So, um, and, and you also mentioned tenure track faculty. I know that in a lot of the attendance that I have, um, I have attended some of the bargaining is that you have received support from the um, from the tenure track faculty. In fact, um, here at Santa Barbara, the faculty uh, association had written a statement in support of um, in support of lecturers. I was wondering if you can comment on the support from faculty, but also support from other groups at UC and also beyond. Yeah, and I, I want to connect our fight to the fight that, that other workers are conducting also. So in the tenure system, um, faculty start, um, they're hired as assistant professors. And then if they pass a rigorous performance review, they're promoted to associate professor or um, then possibly later full professor. And once you're at the associate professor level or full professor level, um, you have a job for life. Um, uh, you can't be fired except in cases of, of gross misconduct. And that system exists to protect what we call academic freedom. It protects the ability of faculty to teach controversial subjects in their classroom without fear of political interference um, so that, you know, like the governor or the legislature can't come in and say something like, what you're teaching about global warming, I don't believe in global warming, so I'm going to fire you, something like that, right? So tenure is really important to making sure that students um, get to learn about the broadest range of subjects and the broadest range of perspectives possible. Um, lecturers are not eligible for tenure. Um, however, in the past, in 2003, um, after a number of very, very courageous lecturers went on strike in 2002, what we did win is what's called a continuing appointment. And so after 12 quarters or 12, uh, sorry, 18 quarters or 12 semesters of teaching in the same department, we also undergo a rigorous performance review and if we're assessed positively, we have what's called a continuing appointment. Now, continuing appointment is not tenure. Um, we can still be fired. We can still be laid off. Um, uh, tenure track faculty, it's very, very exceedingly difficult to lay off tenure track faculty. Um, uh, so we, um, even our continuing appointees don't have the stability that tenure track faculty have. Um, and so I, I, I'm, I'm very proud of what the activists who, who came before me um, achieved, Katya was one of them, um, in winning that continuing appointment. But through the years since 2003, only about 8% 
of all lecturers have been able to get a continuing appointment. So that leaves more than 90% of lecturers um, who, who, never, who are never eligible for any kind of job stability at all and are subject to that auto fire button that, that Brandon was talking about. Um, and it's arbitrary whether, whether you're performing well or not. Um, I see our fight in this contract as really a fight about gig work, about the gig economy, and about saying teaching at the University of California should not be gig work, right? It should not be a gig job um, like driving for Uber um, or, or something like that. Um, within our librarian bargaining unit, we're also fighting this fight. Um, we're fighting to make sure that librarians who are hired on temporary short-term contracts as archivists um, uh, uh, themselves have job stability when the archiving work is ongoing, right? It doesn't make sense to say, here's a huge archive that needs to be processed. It's going to take 10 years, but we're only going to hire you on a one-year contract, something like that, right? Um, and uh, I also see us very much in solidarity with other UC unions, like um, AFSCME 3299, for example, which represents um, service workers at the university, um, uh, people like janitors, people like um, uh, gardeners, people who work in the dining halls, right, um, and who staff what students use and access on an everyday basis. Um, they have fought and won against outsourcing of their members' jobs in the past. Um, what the university is doing with teaching right now is very similar to outsourcing. It's not technically outsourcing because we still are W-2 employees. We're not 1099 employees yet, although I worry that Prop, top, Prop 22 may authorize the university to move forward with that at some point. But when you're hiring your employees on um, very part-time um, uh, contracts, right, maybe like 33% time, for a quarter at a time or a semester at a time, and they're not eligible for any benefits. That is gig work, right? Um, that is very similar to outsourcing. So we are really in solidarity with workers all across um, our American economy who are saying that, you know, workers deserve more and deserve better. And that stability uh, can't be reserved just for a small fraction of the elite. No, uh, no, thank you want, for, oh, go ahead, Katya. So I, I also want to add that um, one of the reasons I think that we have so much support from the tenure track faculty is that when someone is the chair of the department and they find an excellent teacher, they would like to offer them a job that would go into the future. And instead, when you're hiring a tenure track person, the expectation is in six years, you'll have a tenure review and you'll be here. Hiring a uh, unit 18 lecturer, the department chairs have to tell everyone who's on the hiring process, don't promise anything, don't promise anything. And it's very frustrating for departments because they want a stable, excellent teaching force. And um, that's one of the reasons that, you know, regularizing us as stable faculty will help everyone, uh, students, departments, the university, and it's entirely reasonable to have a non-gig workforce at the University of California. No, thank you. I was just gonna say, as you mentioned about the kind of um, conditions that lecturers uh, experience in a day-to-day -day and yet still continue to have a teaching, a high level of teaching, I think that speaks a lot to what, I mean, to what lecturers do um, in terms of not just taking care of, worried about um, the day-to-day -day private life, but at the same time also performing at a high level at what we consider to be a prestigious university, public university in, in, the, in, the, in the nation. So, um, no, thank you for all of that. And um, so I, Gary, I know- can I, can I just say a couple more words about yeah. faculty solidarity? Um, we've received extraordinary support and solidarity um, from, uh, from a subset of tenure track faculty, I would say, um, more than ever before. And, and that's the right thing because uh, we're all workers at the University of California. We do remarkably similar work. I, I really want to credit Constance Penley 
um, who teaches there at, at, at UC Santa Barbara, um, and especially Wendy Matsumura, who teaches at UC San Diego for leading these solidarity efforts, usually through the UC faculty associations and the Council of UC faculty associations. Um, uh, I think they they recognize um, how inequitable our working conditions are and how bad they are for students, how bad they are for teaching and, and education. Um, that said, um, we also do the teaching that makes tenure track faculty's research possible, right? Um, uh, as you heard Katya say, we teach uh, generally twice as many classes um, per year as a tenure track faculty member teaches. And we are not compensated for research, although many of us um, have active research agendas, publish our research, um, continue our research on, on a voluntary basis without being paid for it. Um, the fact that the classes we teach mean that tenure track faculty have more time to do research should bring us together, right? Should show us how our interests align and how we should be fighting for the same thing. Unfortunately, in some cases, what happens is it means teaching is looked down on. And the two tier system that you described, Gary, um, is also a two, two tier system that pri privileges and prioritizes research over teaching. So what we're really fighting for here is to say, look, teaching is a core part of the university's mission. Um, uh, in, investing in teaching faculty, investing in lectures is one of the best ways to invest in, in students' education. And I uh, would very much like to see more support for our fight from the institutional bodies of the University of California, from the divisional academic senates, um, from the academic council at the UC Office of the President, for example. Um, no, thank you. Um, you highlight the, something that I was getting at because you know, as I know, the University of California school system, uh, the, the California teach um, higher education plan was you have the UC, the CSU and the community college and and like UC has given the privilege of focusing on research um, and then see it. But then the fact that, you know, but doesn't erase the fact that um, UC wants to accept a lot of students so that, so there is that teaching mission. Um, there is a certain priority um, that are being, um, that uh, more faculty have certain priorities. And I think you can see that between the research and teaching divide. Um, Which is also, a gender and racial divide also. Um, right, yeah. uh, lecturers are far more likely to be women than tenure track faculty are, yet we are often excluded from um, the, you know, the, the programs and the policies that support work-life balance, that support mm -hmm. um, uh, family care. Um, uh, we're slightly more likely to be non-white than tenure track faculty are. Um, so the, these hierarchies that we're talking about, you know, have uh, have have big demographic dimensions also. Oh, it's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank I would you. I would add. I was, you know, one of my phone calls. I got on the phone with someone, <clears throat> a lecturer, and her husband was a was a tenured faculty member, and and he died a few years ago, and she had been teaching. I mean, you know, this is a kind of classic spousal hire situation where. These are kind of old school. I don't know that many people do this anymore due to changing dynamics, but um, <clears throat> you're lucky to get one job, much less two. But she was she was hired because because her husband came to the university and uh, and he died. And she uh, was basically ineligible for a pension because she had been part time for the first 20 years of her appointment, you know, and she, she'd been working at the university for I, I, you know, something like 20 years and uh, was, you know, working probably longer than she wanted to because of this money situation. And it's just, it's just crazy. Um, you know, another, another thing about, about racial equity, you know, there, there was there's been some research done showing that a lot of the kind of adjunctification, which would be a term to describe the, you know, part-time contingent basis of hiring for lecturers kind of got a big boost in the in the 70s when a lot of activists were really pushing hard for black studies for women's studies for ethnic studies that the university in california kind of 
considered this an opportunity to to pursue new flexible employment uh, <laughs> options, and they did. And so you see uh, these early black studies departments. Everyone's hired on a continuum basis. Um, they really, and, and I mean, things have gotten better in a lot of those departments now, but they're still not on par with with yeah. many other departments. So there's a real racial and gender equity thing going yeah. on here. Well, I think this brings up to maybe one of my last few questions before I, I give you um, the last word, because as we're nearing the end of our um, interview, but you know, we have a new, um, president in the University of California system, Michael Drake. And in some of his statements, one of the things he really wanted to focus on is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in one of the statements he mentioned is that he really wants to address, um, he wants to work with the regents, uh, let me see now, I have it here, um, to broaden um, and admit students and be more inclusive which is what he thinks is very important. But I was wondering um, if you can comment on um, his, his efforts in diversity uh, with regards to um, the ongoing struggles of the lectures, which he had, brought, which he had mentioned is um, more uh, uh, demographically diverse. And I think for me, I think this is, uh, an, uh, this is a divide between um, important issues related to class, and gender and race that I think are all intertwined and that one cannot address one without addressing the other. For example, I think if just my observation, if, if labor wins, I think a lot of more people benefit. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're gonna, I think we'll, I think we're gonna make things better. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I kind of walked into this a little bit late. Um, Mia had already set up a really great union along with a lot of other people. Um, and and, I, and it, I, I thought that this was the way that unions were run in general. That's not true. <laughs> it's much better. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, so I, I'm just, I feel extremely lucky to be taking part of this and also totally hopeful um, like my, you know, my dissatisfaction with the job is, um, is a, a close, it's the other side of a coin, uh, and the other side is hope. So I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful that things are going to get better. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to say it's, there's no, there will be no success in expanding diversity if people come in on short term, part time contracts and then don't make it to their continuing appointment if the UC continues the practice of, of treating us like temps and just disposing of us. So to build a diverse, inclusive um, faculty at all levels, um, the, the kind of goals of our union are very important. And I would say that the regents President Drake, you know, have taken some very positive steps recently, like eliminating the SAT, ACT scores from the application process. Very, very positive. I think it's going to be very, very helpful in, in opening, opening up more equitable access um, to a wider range of, of students to a UC education. Um, uh, but as Katya said, we are the teaching faculty who support and mentor those students. And if I'm a, if I'm a lecturer, well, I am a lecturer who needs two jobs in order to make ends meet, right? Um, if I'm a lecturer who is constantly applying to other jobs because I don't know if I'm going to have a job next quarter or next year, I'm not able to give my full attention um, uh, in the way that I want to, to my students. And so the, the motto of our contract campaign is faculty equity, student success, because I mean, talking about two, two sides of the coin, those are also two sides of the same coin. Um, I was very hopeful when President Drake took office um, that he would show leadership um, uh, on labor issues because the University of California Magnificent institution, um, really historically notoriously very hostile to workers and very hostile to labor unions. 
um, when President Napolitano first started, um, President Drake's predecessor, she made it a priority to settle the outstanding union contracts that were being negotiated. I, I was very hopeful that President Drake would have a similar priority um, that hasn't come to pass. I'm also disappointed that lecturers have reached out to President Drake multiple times to request meetings. Um, the UC Union Coalition also representing um, nearly 90,000 workers at the University of California has reached out to President Drake to request a meeting. Um, he has not replied to any of those requests. So he seems at the moment very intent on ignoring us um, when this is an area that he could be showing a lot more leadership in. No, um, no thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I think my last question is, I know that in the re uh, last week, I think, the uh, lecturers, the ones who voted, has endorsed a, um, a, a, a strike a vote that was passed uh, lot, um, unan or almost unanimously. And so I guess my question is, and then you also had the, the latest or the last bargaining that happened uh, earlier this week. So uh, maybe if you can comment on uh, what's in store for the summer, maybe that's one way maybe we can uh, end this conversation. Well, a lot of lecturers are involuntarily unemployed during the summer, so we have more time and more energy to dedicate to our contract campaign. Um, so our contract campaign is not in a lull. Um, we are really calling on executive vice chancellors and provosts at each campus as key decision makers about faculty matters um, to be accountable. Um, in this in this area um, and to be responsible for the welfare of about one third of UC's teaching faculty. Um, we are continuing to uh, to lobby the regents um, and we'll continue to, to pressure um, the, those key decision makers um, uh, uh, until we have a settled contract. We have declared impasse, which means that there is no further room for negotiating. Um, we will be working with the Public Employment Relations Board throughout the summer, um, going through their impasse processes, including mediation and fact finding. Um, and we're preparing for a strike in the fall. Um, as you said, Gary, 96% of our members have voted to authorize a strike if necessary. Um, UC management did not accept our last best and final contract offer, and uh, we don't want to, but it seems to be the only way to improve our working conditions and the only way to get UC management to, to listen to us. Uh, thank you very much. And I think when you say volunteer, what comes to mind is that if I uh, just, if we can share with our audience is that the bargaining team for the lecturers are all volunteer force just like all the union volunteer uh, bargaining committees, whereas the UCOP, um, they are hired administrators who actually bargain for the UCOP. So I think there, there is already that additional, um, what's the word, burden, you might say, or challenge. But um, I think this is, um, I think that may, we're closing to our end of our show. I was wondering if you have any last comments you wanted to share with our audience that I have not asked or we haven't discussed and I'll give, give everyone uh, their the last words. Uh, why don't we start with Brandon? <clears throat> yeah, thanks for thanks for having us on. I, for my part, I am going to, uh, you know, in order to, as a show of strength for a, for a strike, I'm going to be planting a garden just in case paychecks get turned off. I'm going to have tomatoes uh, and it takes, you know, a few months to, to uh, get going. So, you know, just uh, that's that's my that's my preparedness plan. So, right, yeah. going back to the roots. <laughs> the mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Katya, I was gonna say, you know, no one welcomes a strike when, but the non-cooperation in two years of bargaining has pushed us to this point. And so, I encourage all listeners, all students, all staff, all faculty to push on the office of the president to pay attention to us, to give us a good contract um, so that we're not driven into having to have the strike in order to get their attention. 
Thank you. Yeah, we're on student side. Um, we are fighting on behalf of students so that students have great teachers and can depend on and rely on those teachers. Um, uh, a strike is a short term sacrifice to win long term improvements. Um, so I'm often asked, you know, will a strike hurt students? Well, the current system is hurting students. The current system is damaging the quality of education and depriving students of the education that they deserve. Um, so if management forces us to, um, we will stick to our convic convictions and we will have the courage and we will ask students to join us in fighting for the university that we all want and the university we all deserve. No, thank you very much. And um, I think um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for joining me this morning. And uh, I would I can just say personally myself on behalf of the Librarians Union will definitely support you uh, on your struggles and um, and we go onward. Thank you. Um,